टू डिजिटल कम्युनिकेशन प्ले लिस्ट हियर इन दिस सेशन आई वी गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन कन्वल्यूशन कोड्स बेजिक्स इट्स पैरामीटर एंड हाउ टू हैव अ डिजाइनिंग ऑफ कन्वल्यूशन कोड्स सो लेट अस बिगिन दिस सेशन विथ फर्स्ट पार्ट विच इज वॉट बेजिक्स ऑफ कन्वल्यूशन कोड नाउ सी वेन वी टॉक अबाउट कन्वल्यूशन कोड्स सो दैट इज वॉट हैविंग ब्लॉक ऑफ एन कोड डिजिट्स जनरेटेड बाई एन कोडर in time unit depends not only on the block of k messages but it is also depending on preceding blocks which is there in message digits so let us try to understand what is the meaning of that so for that i'll take one basic example of that convolution encoder so in that if i take a basic example then let us have a shift register so there are three blocks which is there in shift register first is having message bit m second is having bit m1 and third is having bit m2 now see in that here this m that is representing current current message bit so this is what current message bit and this two bits that is representing state of convolution encoder so this is what preceding two successive bits it is previous two successive message bits which represents state of convolution code i'll explain all those things step by step now see how this shift register that is working like see first of all if i say one message initially all bits are zero initially all bits are zero now if i say i give one bit message bit one over here so one will come here this will be zero zero if i send next bit that is zero then this one bit that will shift here zero will shift here and this zero which is over here that will get discarded so ultimately then after that state will become 0 1 0 now if i enter one bit one bit over here in that case this bit this one will be this bit will become one this zero previous that will shift over here and this one over here that will shift here and this zero over here will get discarded so now state will become 1 0 so ultimately as you enter bits here it will get shifted and this first bit that is showing current message bit and this two bits that is what previous message bit that we have entered here and which is showing state of the convolution code so let us see how it will encode so step by step i will explain how things are happening inside so if i say i have one output which is what i am taking from here let us say it is x1 and second output that as a, that i am taking it from here that is x2 and output actually that is switching in between these two now if i say this x1 that is what algebraic sum of all bits then i need to add it to adder so all bits that i will be adding it with adder and for this x2 for this x2 if i say only this first bit and this last bit that is getting added then x2 is algebraic sum of m and m2 now see here we need to do modulo to sum so when you represent this in terms of output then output of first x1 output of first x1 so that will be x1 is equals to x1 is equals to message bit 1 2 message bit m m1 and m2 xoring so it will be xoring of m1 m2 and m1 so it is algebraic sum of all and output x2 that is what 
xoring of m and m2 one can say this is even modulo to some so when you see the result and output so that is getting switch in between x1 and x2 and output stream that one can obtain now what about states as i have told m1 and m2 that justifies state of this encoder so state of this encoder that is predefined like see if i say i have m1 here and m2 here in here i am defining states so in that if m1 and m2 is 0 0 then let us say it is there in state a if m1 and m2 that is 0 1 then let us say it is there in state b if m1 and m2 is 1 0 in that case if it is in state c and if it is 1 1 then it is in then state d then as you insert message stream here these states will change i'll explain what is the importance of state and how we can have designing of convolution encoder so all those things that we are able to discuss here in this session i'll explain basic parameters only so what are those parameters which i have explained in now there is a shift resistor this is three block shift resistor that one can see first bit that is representing current bit next two bits that is representing states of convolution code it will be predefined state here output that is getting switch in between x1 and x2 x1 is algebraic sum of all three bits and x2 is what algebraic sum of m and m2 so this is how output is there one can say this is even modulo 2 output which is what xoring now let us try to understand all those basic terms which is there in convolution encoder now when you see in convolution encoder there is small k so small k defines number of message bits small k small k that defines number of message bits now here one can see there is only one message bits so small k is equals to one here the reason is only one message bit that is what we are inserting here so small k that is equals to one for this particular example here n is number of encoded output bits one can see number of encoded output bits that is x1 and x2 x1 is m xoring m1 xoring m2 and x2 is m xoring m2 or one can say modulo to sum of these bits so ultimately here encoded output bits that is 2 so small n that is 2 so small n defines number of encoded output bits and third is constraint length now what is constraint length constraint length means it defines how many shift resistors are there so here there are three shift resistor so constraint length of this convolution encoder is three so constraint length that is based on number of shift resistor so here constraint length capital k that is equals to three that is based on number of shift resistor that we are using so these are the basics that one should know and as i have told you output is getting switch in between x1 and x2 so output stream that will be x1 x2 x1 x2 that is how it is happening so this switch that is what getting switch in between these two so you will be finding output stream that is x1 x2 x1 x2 like this so output stream that is getting obtained as per x1 x2 x1 x2 like that and when you want to calculate code rate so code rate is small k divided by small n where small k that is number of message bits and n that is what output encoded bit so for this particular example small k that is what number of message bit it is equals to 1 and output encoded bits that is 2 so code rate of this convolution encoder example that is 1 by 2 and as i have told you constraint length that is based on number of shift resistor so single message bit influence out encoder output for different successive shifts so in short one can say number of shift resistor that is equals to constraint length and code dimension that we represent in terms of n comma k n is number of encoded output bits and small k that is number of message bit so this example that explains you this convolution encoder that is 2 comma 1 where 2 is equals to 
number of output bits and k is equals to number of input bits so when you see this dimension it is what we are re recalculating or one can say calibrating with respect to time so at a time you will be having this so with respect to time this will change so whatever n this n and k value will be fixed but data of n and data of k that will get changed with respect to time and as per that you will be finding output x1 and x2 is getting change so these are the basics which is there regarding convolution codes i hope that you have understood this session and this is what we are little bit to utilized in examples in future so i'll explain all those basics with examples so here one can see all those basics which is there with example of convolution encoder and same convolution encoder that i will be explaining in future for different criteria so let us see few more session in future i'll be adding it in my playlist so just go through it once thank you so much for watching this video